Hello everybody! Watch this video to find out how to install and configure Citrix Hypervisor or SAN server, how to take a snapshot and how to restore the whole system back to its previous state. Also, you will see how to recover data from a SAN server virtual machine if it's deleted by mistake, if it refuses to boot or if it displays an error at startup that cannot be fixed. Citrix Hypervisor, or SAN Server, is a virtualization platform based on a special version of Linux and developed by the company called Citrix Systems. With this platform, you can run a number of virtual machines on a single physical server. This hypervisor lets you create virtual machines, take snapshots of their disks, and manage virtual machine workloads. Just like other virtualization products, it's by no means perfect, and sometimes there may be failures or errors resulting in loss of data. If that's the case, there's a question to answer – how to recover the data? This video will give you the answer in all detail – how to recover files from virtual machine working with SAM hypervisor. For starters, let's explore how to install this hypervisor. There are a few things to be checked before installing SAM Server version 8. It requires a 64-bit Intel VT or AMD V processor based on x86 architecture. If you plan to run Windows virtual machines, you need to enable hardware virtualization technologies – Intel VT or AMD V in BIOS. Also, you need to download an installation ISO image from the Citrix website before you can install the Xen's hypervisor. To do it, go to the Citrix download page. From the drop-down menu, select Citrix Hypervisor Xen Server and then choose the latest version – 8.2 LTSR. You need to register before you can download anything. Add the ISO image to your server with the remote management console such as IMM, ILO, etc. or create a bootable USB drive. To begin the installation, start the server and boot from the USB drive. In the Grub Boot menu, choose Install. At the first stage, choose the keyboard layout to be used and click OK. At the next step, press F9 if you need to download a special device driver, or click OK to continue if you don't need it. Accept the license agreement, then choose the disk where you want to install Citrix Hypervisor Send Server. As I install it from a local disk, I choose Local Media from the list of sources and click OK to continue. When installing from CD or DVD, it is recommended to check the disk, otherwise skip the check by clicking OK. Set the password for the root account. Type it again to confirm and click OK. At the next step, you need to configure network parameters, set the automatic or static IP address, add a subnet and gateway, and finally click OK. After that, set the host name and configure the DNS server. And click OK when you're done. Select location, click OK, and city, click OK again. To synchronize time, select NTP and click OK to continue. Finally, it's time to hit the button Install Citrix Hypervisor to begin the installation. All the data on the disk will be removed. At the end of this process, you'll be offered to install supplemental packs if necessary. If you don't need them, click No to complete the installation. Now that it's over, remove the installation media and press Enter to reboot. When the server has booted, you can connect it to, to it from the client PC. To do it, enter the server's IP address in the browser. You can find this address in the hypervisor window. To manage the server, download and install SAN Center by following this link. Start the utility and add the server. Right-click on SAN Center and choose Add. Type the server's IP address, administrator's name and password, and click Add. Now that you have connected to the server, you can create virtual machines, manage the host network and its storage and do many other things. 
to install an operating system for the virtual machine, you will need an installation disk or ISO file. I'll be using an ISO image. For this purpose, you need to create a repository where ISO images of operating systems will be stored. To do that, connect to the server by SSH and create a local folder there by running this command. After that, create a repository with the store manager using another command. In this command, name, label, local ISO is the repository name. When this command is performed, a new storage will appear in the GUI, which stands for Graphical User Interface, window. To upload images to the server, connect to it by SFTP and copy the image to this folder. To activate images, you should browse to local ISO storage and hit the Rescan button. After that, the image will appear on the list. Also, every item initialized in the local repository will be added to the boot list of the virtual machine. Now you can select the um, unuploaded image and install it onto a new virtual machine. To create a virtual machine in Sense Center, go to the tab New VM. Select an operating system you'd like to install and click Next. Give a name for this new virtual machine. Next. Select Installation Media, an ISO image from the repository you have created earlier, and click Next. Select the server where you would like to create a virtual machine, click Next. Choose the number of processors and amount of memory to be allocated to this virtual machine, Next. After that, set the preferred storage size and click Next. If necessary, add one more network interface, click Next, and finally click Create Now to have the machine created. The virtual machine will appear on this list. When it happens, the machine will start automatically and the installation of the operating system will begin. When you are through with all typical stages of installation, the virtual machine will be ready to use. The Xen Hypervisor lets you take snapshots of your virtual machine. To create and manage snapshots, you need quite a lot of free space, in fact, more than twice the size of your virtual machine. If it happens so that you created a virtual machine on a storage device with a smaller free space reserved than required, and then decided to take a snapshot, it will occupy all the free space available. When you try to remove it, the snapshot will be gone, but you won't get any free space back. A snapshot captures the state of a virtual machine at the specific date and time when the snapshot was taken. Such snapshots will help you recover accidental removed files or system settings that existed at the time when the snapshot was taken. To create a snapshot, select a virtual machine, go to the Snapshots tab and click Take Snapshot. Give the snapshot name, add a description if necessary and click Take Snapshot. The folder will appear on this list. To go back to a specific system snapshot, select it from this list and click Revert to. Check this box if you need a snapshot of the current state of your virtual machine and click Yes. After that, the operating system will roll back to its previous state. You will find the specific snapshot you need by checking its date and time. If the virtual machine refuses to boot or displays an error that can't be fixed, or if there is a server error, in any of these cases you can safely use Hetman Partition Recovery to bring your data back. It supports data recovery from virtual disks of various hypervisors, including Citrix Xen. By default, Citrix Xen server uses LVM storage for its virtual machines. This storage method has quite a lot of advantages if compared with VHD files. But sometimes you need to use the uh, file-based storage mode, like in VMware ESX, and it may also create additional difficulties for the recovery process. When the physical disk containing virtual machine files is connected to the computer, Hetman Partition Recovery will display all the virtual machine disks. To see which virtual disks uh, belong to a specific virtual machine, you should run some commands on the server to find the UUID, Universal Unique Identifier, of the virtual machine. 
the UUID of its disk, and the UUIDSR, which stands for Universal Unique Identifier of the Storage Repository. To do all that, connect to the server by SSH and type the first command. As a result, you found the virtual machine UUID. Now you can use this identifier to view the connected disks with the help of this command. In the end, the virtual machine UUID is given. As a result, you get the virtual disk UUID, which in its turn can be used to find the storage repository UUID. Now that we have the repository identifier, it's easy to understand to which virtual machine specific disks belong, and you'll be able to identify those disks in the data recovery utility. Connect the server's disks to a Windows computer, download, install, and run the data recovery tool. Hetman Partition Recovery will display all virtual machine disks in the Drive Manager. Choose the disk where the required files used to be stored, right-click on it, and select Open. Select the scan type File Scan. If the fast scan can't find the required files, then go for full analysis. Right-click on the disk, Analyze again, Full analysis and specify the system for this disk, then click Next. Find the folder where the files were stored, select the files you want to restore, Click Recovery, uh, specify the disk and folder where you'd like to save the files and click Recovery again. When the entire process is over, you will find the recovered files in the folder you have chosen. If the Xen server storage was based on a RAID system, you will need to use Hetman RAID Recovery. This program will automatically build the RAID with the available disks, and all you have to do is to run the scan. wait for the results and recover the information. Hetman RAID Recovery supports the majority of most popular RAID types. To make your lives easier, our program features the option to search for files by their names. Also, you'll be able to preview the file contents to make sure that this is the actual file that you need. And that is all for now. Hopefully this video was useful. Remember to click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Leave comments to ask questions, thank you for watching, and good luck! While you're watching this video, civilians in Ukraine are dying from attacks and bombardments of the Russian Federation. Putin's insane regime has attacked a peaceful country in the very heart of Europe. Support the Ukrainian army by making a contribution to the fund Come Back Alive. Use the QR code or the link below the video to transfer any amount of money that will boost Ukrainian resistance and help it counter Russia's dishonorable invasion.